well, every different skill set, like the DP, for example. I mean, cameras are coming out every five minutes. There's probably one that just came out while we were sitting here. So it's like, it's, it's a full-time job just to keep up. And, and one thing that I struggle with, I surround myself with millennials and people that hire young people in my company because I need to know what's going on. I don't, I don't have time for that. You know, and, and to stay in, in touch and to keep up with all the cameras and all the stuff and the filters and the different lenses, and that's a full-time job in and of itself. And there's people that are media that write about it that you know, keep you informed and things like that. But, you know, and that's true for editing. That's true for computing. Apple just came out with a new tower finally. You know, like we've all been waiting six years for that. Uh, and, and to know, because when you do have that knowledge, it is power because you're ahead of everyone else. Well, one of the things that's happening is with raw recordings and, you know, whether it's going to go 4K and they're giving you a raw recording. As a DP, you don't have to do anything anymore. It was like a hologram. It records, <laughs> no, this raw recording of like a, a F55, Sony F55s or the new red Epics, and then you're recording raw. Your decisions on how it's going to look on the set is really the only decision you're making. Everything else is being recorded raw, and then in post is where you look at it. So it's going to get easier and easier in that aspect. But then, what, do you shoot in 4K because 4K is the future, and you you know you you protect the future, or do you shoot with your 5D because it's cheap to go to do this, you know, and you can get the you get, do the whole thing yourself. There's so many variables. But eventually, you won't have to know all of them because with the raw recordings, all the data will be there. And that kind of begs the question of what's the difference between new media and just media that's evolving at a high rate of speed. And I, I would suggest, obviously, my bias is that it's interactivity and uh, organically uh, embedding other kinds of, either even if it's only on the marketing side, other kinds of engagement and interaction into what your end product is. And not to say, but uh, clearly you're not going to have people voting on your ending if you have a, a beautiful lyrical uh, narrative film. Um, but that the when you now have such a digital distribution base, and it, it is all new all the time. And again, even on the hardware side, uh, in the living room, you know, you've got chipsets with LG and Samsung embedding 3D chips right there, and then. On the even what the remote control becoming more like a tablet and all those things fusing on the hardware side well that affects distribution deals too and that's why there's all the people suing each other all the time of who has the rights and must carry and all that stuff and do you separate all the rights you know there's broadcast and there's there's internet rights and there's VOD and there's pay-per-view and you know that's all different media channels and then it's separated by country you may be able to do it in territory so domestically or so internationally so in high def so in 3d so in hd so in sd there's all different kinds of markets that you can you know compartmentalize and make money from each section of it but who's doing all that and who's checking on it <laughs> Well, and also a lot of the things that were maybe typically flat um, to be print are also becoming animated or being uh, composited with a mixture of true mixed media with film and image and all that stuff. I'm sure you've seen it on yours. The legal process is tougher than it's ever been right now, you know, with all this stuff. And you have to be so careful when you're doing any kind of rights deal nowadays whether it's with a publisher or a studio or a financier, whomever it is. And uh, unfortunately, I've seen so many great uh, creators and rights holders uh, stumble and fall in this area because they don't have the right protection. They don't have the right entertainment attorney. They don't have, you know, they, they, just, they just don't know. And, uh, and because of that, a lot of these guys get stuck in deals that they wish they never got involved in in the first place. And, uh, and you just see that more and more now because of all of these different opportunities. And, uh, and that's why no matter what you do, no matter what type of content you're working on, you're creating, always make sure you have that right team on board, especially in, in the protection area, you know, and, and make sure you have a good attorney. You know, make sure you have good representation if you, if you have representation. And, uh, you know, with me, I was blessed because I was born in a household where you know, my father, even though he, he, he chooses not to admit it, is a copyright attorney. So, you know, I, everything that I did, I had my, my father right there behind me going, you know, with his red marker, and nope, 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 nope. <clears throat> so whatever you need to do, 
just make sure that you have that right protection. That's probably the most important when you get down to it. Maybe there should be an app, <laughs> again, that is tells you where the rights are, and you check off who you're going to give the rights to, what territories, what rights they're getting, and it'd be very simple that way. You don't, you could be boilerplate with a lawyer, but you don't actually have to have lawyers. Because sometimes when we're free, you create a five-minute piece, you don't have, you can't spend ten thousand dollars on a lawyer to protect you. You know, you you only spent ten thousand dollars on the entire project, so. Somebody write this app. We all well, the four A's in uh, A and A have add ID, which is uh, basically like a digital watermarking. Uh, wait, oversimplified, but it's a, a format for marking pieces of ads and content as they go through the system for workflow and asset management. And uh, so, I think that all of those kind of solutions are migrating into the chain to your point where you will be able to know exactly where it is and where it ended up and who's consuming it and. If they, the same way you they you can, uh, uh, not even with cookies, you just write your data. Did you click on the ad or not? And I think it's going to happen for the rest of uh, non-interactive content is all going to be in the, thrown into the maw of the system and digested, and it's all going to be tracked just the same way. I like when you've done an ad and you go to watch it on YouTube and you have to watch an ad to go see your ad. I think that's funny. <laughs> Be a lot more of that. Five minute warnings. What are we gonna do for five minutes, Susan? Uh, I think <laughs> words of wisdom. Maybe. Words of um, wisdom. I have a question. Okay. Back here. Sorry, okay. you can't see me. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, can you speak a little bit about marketing? Like, besides just marketing it yourself, you know, on all the Twitter, Facebook, like all that stuff. Are there companies or people that do basically marketing for web series and where would we find those people or those companies? Can you speak a little bit about that? There's several. And I think that, um, you know, again, back to what it is that you're doing, what is the content and what type of marketing do you need? Because if it's sports related, there's companies that are awesome at that. And they're fairly easy to find. There's long lists of them, but um, even just Google searching, you know, anywhere, and you can find them. But target market, like you were saying too, because these markets um, are well defined, and and base, you know, they may even want to partner with you on some things. I've found that before too, because the lines are blurring between, uh, you know, production and marketing and everything. It's all kind of going into one place and I, I have clients that have marketing companies that we end up doing stuff even for them and their clients and things but um, it is targeted to I, I would say go with a company over an individual unless somebody's just a complete rock star and I don't know that person I wish I did um, but figure out what your content's based on and go for that um, but marketing for what are you talking about marketing your program yeah to the internet or to advertisers yeah. to sponsors like marketing a a web series for, for an audience, you know, like, besides just doing our own, like, grassroots campaign, like, is there someone else or a company that specializes in that? There's several. There's also companies like Yellow Thunder that are, will do targeted marketing. Like, if you say, I've got this video that's all about law, you know, I think that's really boring. But you've got this, and you need to target market it. They will actually, they have algorithms and things that will share. I mean, like, physically share, not, not fake ghost clicks or things like that to just drive numbers up, but they actually have marketing that will target market your audience. If you're like, I need lawyers that are, you know, senior partners and whatever, they will be able to, to suss that out and find out the users and stuff and drive just straight up traffic. You know, I mean, that may be another solution, you know, more than just like marketing and getting in, but it's all through, they have a sharing platform of heavy YouTube users that actually share um, that information with target markets, and that can be applied to anything, even children's series or whatever. I think uh, you know, just make a distinction between marketing and PR. And PR is basically a subset of marketing. Um, yet there's all kinds of ways to buy lists and target, and I mean, even Google AdSense, you can buy to target certain demographic if you think your content's going to be more received by a particular demographic. And there's a lot of startups in that arena, like PageWoo, where you can go and buy your own media and buy your own target. But to do a campaign, creative campaign, even a little PR boutique, 
uh, they're very well versed because you can do creative where you have a hook and a tagline and do a campaign and it can mix in advertising and also other things like you know even speaking engagements or whatever that might be uh, and the social media aspect and pretty much every all of them do the social part for you now too so everybody kind of has to in that world has to do that now my two cents, I think, I agree with everything that everybody said here, but, you know, grassroots is still, I think, the most important thing. And, you know, you have to, again, spend the time uh, that's necessary, you know, use all these different tools to your advantage, you know, keep up the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, you know, get out there to festivals like this festival, to South by Southwest, to Comic-Con, to places like that. Meet as many people as you can. Knock on as many doors as you can. You know, use those relationships and those friendships to help spread the word. And uh, and again, if you are passionate and if you spend the time, then you will see success if you keep that up. And, uh, and that's something that I tell every creator that I work with. I think since we're in the new media format, all these things that you're asking, that's a career. There's a career in doing exactly what you just asked, being an expert at this and marketing new media to other companies, to advertising agencies, to individual, um, you know, to, instead of just uh, counting on everybody else to do it, I think it's places that we can pick up right now and start companies that do this in this new media. It's, it's well needed. That's a good piece of advice. Don't be deluded to think that any one person, one company, or one thing is like an end all solution. I like a lot of people have that disease no matter what it is, even if you're awesome at it, it's a lot of work. And if any company, person, or individual's representing that they're just your one-stop solution, it's not, I can tell you right now. Like, everybody's gonna roll their sleeves up, and you know, there are people that are better at it than others, but like, it is easy to just say, hey, I've made this great thing, and now the world should appreciate me for it. Uh, and even on the large, large brands, I mean, if that were true, you wouldn't see any billboards for a Batman movie. You know, like, and the people behind all the bus ads and bitches and stuff, there's a throngs of people behind that initiative to make that happen, and that's why it goes so far and wide. So, it, you know, that, that is something to be eyes wide open with, that it, it is, you know, every, again, everything's a job for a reason, and it all does take effort, and absolutely go out there and look under every rock and, and be tenacious. Can we thank these industry leaders for taking time out today? David Houston, Kyle Chember, Allison Dollar, and Chuck Paisley, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you sharing your wisdom. Please stick around. Our second screening of web series is happening now with their Q&A, and then the morning screening series ends.